Elise Bertrand, welcome to Classique. Bienvenue à Aubonne en, in Switzerland. It's a pleasure to have you and it's great to meet you in person. Thank you, it's a pleasure too. Congratulations on joining the Ambassador Programme as part of Classique. You're the first uh, open application in the composition section that Classique has opened, and that is how you've, you, you've come here. Yes, absolutely. It's, um, it's a great honour. I'm the first composer, and I think it's a great chance here to, to be and to perform also, because uh, tonight uh, there will be some Schubert and my pieces, and it's marvellous to be here. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll come to the programme in detail for tonight, and we'll come to the fact that you are more than a composer. Mm -hmm. You're a very rare, in my opinion, combination of violinist and composer, which, to be honest, I don't come across that often, this, this specific combination. I meet many pianists who are composers, but being a violinist and a composer and having a full-time career in both activities is fascinating. How did this come about? What, why are you pursuing both uh, avenues simultaneously? Uh, actually, uh, my great chance um, has always been to start the music by piano at the age of five. So this really opened my ears and uh, developed the polyphonic harmonical sense of music. And I think this is really important when you compose. It's not like just the melody because mm. the melodic part of violin is mm. very monodic. So you, it's very mm, restricted in a way. But the, the piano opens so much. It's like you have an orchestra under the hands in your hands, in your, in your power somehow, and you can do everything. It's very free in a way, and that helped me much, of course. I started at five and then uh, impro improvised at the age of 11, and that's how it started. But you moved to the violin. You didn't stay with the piano as your I performance in I in instrument. In my performance mm. career, yes. I. Uh, uh, yes, I'm violinist now, but I always keep the piano as a really important part of my life. It's, it's not like a daily practice, because mm. I don't really practice it. I, I use the piano for composition. I really compose at the piano. Mm -hmm. It's not like composing at the table. It's very physical, and it's, um, I think it's easier, just, just easier, because you have all the harmony. and. And the layers and the... Absolutely, uh, and composers wrote mm. this way. Mm. Um, absolutely for all the pianist composer, but also in general, it's, it's, it's very common to, to, to compose at the piano. And this was my great chance, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk a little about how you came to uh, here and uh, w where, you, where you are now in your career. You're based in Paris and you're completing your master's at the Conservatoire Supérieur in Paris in chamber music, I believe. Yes, I, I'm just done with chamber music uh, yep. a few weeks ago and uh, I completed also my master in violin, but now I'm continuing violin there in CNSM as artist diploma mm -hmm. uh, and also in uh, writing studies, so orchestration and analysis and next year uh, fugue. So it's a, it's a very, uh, very complete um, lessons, and I, I think it's really important to have all this package. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a complete overview of, 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 of music making, because you're creating, you're performing, you're working with ensembles, you're working with colleagues. Absolutely. It's the full music experience. Elise, you have accomplished so much already. You're, you're 23, and you have works a number of works uh, already published through uh, Biodo, uh, based in Paris. You, you've accomplished and, and gathered a wonderful group of uh, colleagues for the performance tonight, and you regularly perform in, in, in festivals and uh, um, series. How do you balance the, the I guess, the the time pressures of being a performer and a composer 
and, and make decisions on what you're going to commit to? It's actually a balance that uh, we are, I, I am permanently balancing. It's a daily process. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we never can say, now I am balanced. It's no. always something to research and it depends really on the works I have to play and the works I have to compose. The balance is always um, very, uh, very unsteady, but in a way it's very natural because I did this since um, my childhood in some way. So I'm very used to it and this is how I feel the, the most interesting experience in music. This is what I really am to do both of them. This is a very good point you touched on because you've been composing since, you know, for, for, for many, like since the beginning of your performance career as well. You've been juggling yeah, the two absolutely. side by side throughout. Mm -hmm. And, but, but would, you, would you say that you, you need the composing to assist your performance career and you need, you, you need to do both activities I need it in my heart, of course, because it's, I think it's very complementary and I wouldn't do just the violin career and I wouldn't do also just the composing one because it's, it's very complementary in the energies uh, to feel the stage performance, to, to talk with the audience, to, yes. to, 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 to connect, to, to share with musicians on stage. This is absolutely not the same feeling that composing. Composing, you were often alone in front of your piano and it brings an enormous happiness. But it's, it's ca different kinds of, uh, of happiness, energies and sharing also. So I have the chance to do both and it's very incredible for me. You've been, <coughs> excuse me, you've been nominated for the Victoire de la Musique Classique as a young... Uh, violinist. <laughs> yes, as a young violinist. Congratulations <laughs> on this nomination. Thank you. But let's talk more about your compositions because I'm very interested um, in how you, um, how you approach your compositions. We were talking earlier and, and now you're at a point where you're really based uh, or, or you work on commissions is, is, is the bulk of your um, um, opportunities for, for writing new works. Yes, I have many commissions and I'm very grateful of this because it's, uh, it's a diversity of works I have to write and each of them are very, very interesting. It's for uh, uh, String Quartet, for Modigliani. Yes. Here it's a clarinet trio with violin and piano I, I decided to write and for classic and uh, for Emmanuel Bertrand yeah. I wrote a cello solo piece uh, and then I have a violin and harp uh, duet to write and then a string trio so it's it's very different each time and, and you and you mentioned a, a, a horn a, a work for two horns absolutely this is a piece I I, uh, I finished uh, last week yes it's for two horns two solo horns and string orchestra plus harp and a third horn uh, as an echo inside the orchestra. And it's a piece named Couleur, Nacre, and it will be premiered on 15th of June. Yes, in Cathedral de Blois. A lot of composers would love to have this many commissions. This is a testament to your, um, obviously your, your, your artistry and your, your, your composing, but I is it part of your network or is it, has it, has it come about through your colleagues or how have you developed or brought to a situation where you have so many commissions coming to you? I think it's, uh, it's a long process, of mm. course. People recommend you, you know, uh, you know friends uh, who you, you, you worked with and then they can play your pieces also. Um, since I'm uh, very, uh, very young, I, I played with my friends, actually. This, this is how it, it starts yeah. always because they, they trust you, uh, you trust them, and it's really connected to friendship. So um, uh, this is why I started to, to compose for flute, actually, because I have a very good friend, Iris Daverio, mm -hmm. who is now a uh, solo flute in Opéra de Paris. And uh, we met in the CRR de Paris, the conservatory, mm -hmm. yep. at 14, 15, yeah, 14. 
and I decided to, to compose for her, just that, so, so we could play together. And this is how Impression Liturgique um, was uh, written, and then Mosaic for flute and clarinet. And, uh, and yes, she is always my inspiration. And I think it's really important to pay homage to friends who helped me the, during all these years. And, and now it's, it's more free, it's, it's easier because people uh, who don't know me personally write to me. Yes. Like, Do you want to compose for us? And it's all based in a long construction, a lot of uh, uh, friendship and trust. And I think it's really important. Yes. We touched on earlier a fact that you're interested and you've had great experience with writing works for competitions. Yes. And it's something you would like to do more of. Yes, absolutely. This is something I really liked for, uh, for many years, actually. In 2018, uh, I was uh, 17 and turning 18, and I, I wrote a poem for piano solo, mm -hmm. and this was for a concours de, de piano d'épinal oui. in France, and I really enjoyed it. And also, this came uh, several times after for piano campus, also uh, piano competitions competition where I, I composed Le Chant de Lilith for piano and orchestra and uh, also recently for uh, flute, uh, the Concours Larieux, Maxence Larieux in October in Nice and it's for the semi-final so it's a, uh, it's a work monochrome for flute and piano and I really enjoy the process because I know how it feels to go on stage and play. The, the level of adrenaline is so high that during a competition, uh, during a competition, yes. it's even higher, of course, than a concert because Absolutely. you have to, to compare with others. This is uh, uh, so difficult, and I think that when you enter on stage with a piece you like or a contemporary piece that you have been uh, practicing for some weeks or months, and that you you have something even freer, maybe, in a contemporary piece because. There is not the same relationship with a, a traditional repertoire piece when yes. you have to play a Brahms or, or the heritage, a, the, 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 absolutely, the, the, the baggage, when there are the so <laughs> many wonderful versions and, uh, and a contemporary piece. You can be more free and you can call the composers. What did you mean, bar twenty? Uh, I don't understand. Or what? How, how does it feel? And I think the um, the bond with the, mm. the musician is it's much more uh, interesting because we can, we can share an experience and writing for a competition requires uh, also different qualities, uh, technical ones and musical ones. Mm. And this is very interesting because uh, you also want to write as a composer a piece that they will like to play. Of course. In front of the audience and not only jury, but audience. Yeah. Like they can play it again in a concert, and this is very important for me. They can add it to their repertoire and Ab take it absolutely. and give it they, life. Absolutely, they practiced it, and I want, uh, I want for them uh, to feel it's a good souvenir, mm. and that they can feel the piece is becoming theirs also. But it's very clear to me that you're a very collaborative composer in your attitude, in working absolutely. with, uh, again, because you're a performer yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and and yes. the idea that you would write the set piece, so to speak, for a competition and hear it perhaps 12, 15 times, you're eager for that experience to, 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 to learn different interpretation, to learn... Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a great share and we can learn so much from the musicians and it's an exchange and each yeah. time I could do it, it was marvellous. So, yeah. Well... I, I'm sure that, that more commissions will, will be heading your way from this direction. And I'm sure that as you embrace further voices and repertoire, you'll expand your perhaps chamber on size commissions to, to larger uh, yeah. ensemble voices. I hope so. <laughs> Let's talk about tonight. You've gathered together a wonderful group of fellow musicians. But let's start with the program, let's start with the repertoire, because Classique is very proud to have a world premiere of your work tonight, uh, which Classique was uh, able to commission and help you realise your clarinet trio. 
um, you'll be performing. In fact, tonight there are only two composers on the on the on the concert program: yeah. yourself and Schubert. <laughs> so it, it, you're in great company. Could you tell us a little about your our world premiere tonight? The, the clarinet trio, yes, and where it will go and where it is already booked to go after tonight. Okay, yes, I, I will say it in French because it's easier. Oui, bien sûr. Cette pièce est, est en réalité une, une pièce que j'ai pu achever pour classique, oui. puisque c'était déjà un projet d'il y a quelques années. Euh, donc j'avais écrit quelques esquisses euh, que je n'avais pas pu terminer puisqu'il y avait d'autres projets qui s'étaient euh, euh, voilà, parachutés. Donc finalement, euh, le fait que Classique me propose de composer pour euh, une formation que je choisissais m'a permis de terminer ce trio et vraiment de, de, de le compléter et de le produire ce soir avec des merveilleux musiciens, Tomoki Park et Joey Christophe. Oui. Donc c'est l'histoire d'une pièce qui pour moi a une, une, une résonance très particulière puisque psalmodie, déjà je trouve que le mot est très très beau. Le titre, le, de, titre, de, oui, oui. Psalm, le, titre le mot en soi, psalmodie, oui. est vraiment très beau. Il, euh, il entre en résonance avec euh, le, le temps le plus ancien de la musique, le temps à la fois euh, liturgique, où la musique était vraiment au cœur de, de l'institution religieuse. Les textes étaient, étaient donc chantés dans, dans une sorte de, de longue paraphrase mélodique très, très lente et très... Hum, euh, très calme, mais je pense que c'est aussi ce que j'ai voulu euh, composer avec euh, mon trio psalmodie. Alors, on a, on a évidemment une, une pièce qui se développe euh, sur neuf minutes euh, dans quelque chose d'absolument de, de, euh, large, en fait, au niveau du registre, qui n'est pas euh, monotone, puisque la, la, la psalmodie, dans, dans son origine, est quelque chose de... De, de presque sur une seule note. Mmh, mmh. Ici, on a quelque chose qui se développe, forcément, en plus, on est trois instruments, donc euh, avec, avec un piano qui apporte évidemment une grande richesse. Et le, le fait que ce soit une, une, une composition sur, euh, sur l'idée d'un psaume, c'était pour moi aussi l'occasion de, de trouver une signification plus personnelle à la psalmodie. Euh, en l'occurrence, les psaumes sont des textes religieux, mais pour moi, dans, dans, dans cette idée du, du psaume, j'ai voulu euh, euh, imaginer que chacun puisse y lire quelque chose de personnel. Euh, ça, ça peut être évidemment un livre euh, sacré, mais le, le sacré, pour moi, je le relie aussi à autre chose, quelque chose de, de personnel, où chacun cherche ce qu'il veut lire. Et euh, ça peut être... Euh, une autre parole, un autre livre, quelque chose de, de très personnel, euh, même de la poésie ou un roman ou le livre de ses ancêtres, quelque chose qui en tout cas résonne avec chacun d'entre nous. Et hum, la psalmodie ici, c'est quelque chose de très planant, de très calme, euh, une forme en arche où les thèmes reviennent progressivement les uns mmh. après les autres, mais d'une manière toujours plus travaillée et différente. Et je pense que c'est comme ça aussi dans la vie. On n'est jamais le même à travers les expériences qu'on vit. On est toujours un peu transformé. Et les éléments, les rencontres nous transforment. Et ainsi, on peut, on peut, on peut vraiment s'approprier une lecture, un choix qui nous est propre. Et voilà, c'est ce que j'ai voulu transmettre avec cette psalmodie. It's, it, félicitations. Et and, 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 and we, I, I, we all look forward to hearing it this evening. This internal space that you're creating that we can <laughs> reflect on what we want to this, this evening. You touched on the importance of or the effect of meeting people or other artists or um, learning as we go and the influences of other people. For tonight's performance of Salmody, the world premiere, you're performing with Joey Christophe and Tomoki Park, who will be known to the classic audience as part of the ambassador program. And you're taking this Uh, this format after tonight's world premiere to David Frey's festival and David Frey is joining us tonight as part of the concert on piano. Tell us where this clarinet trio might be going next and where audiences might be able to hear it. Uh, I really want to play it for my next CD. Aha. And this would be the 
the closing piece of my next CD. So mm -hmm. it's a really important piece. And this is like a talisman, mm -hmm. as we say in French. Um, this CD will be uh, with Adèle Charvet, Emmanuel de Mitter, Nathanael Gouin, and Raphael Sever. And it's friends that I know for a very long time and that I wanted to, um, to reunite for this, uh, this second disc with uh, two voices cycles, uh, piano pieces, violin and piano pieces, solo violin, and also this trio. So I, I'm, re I'm really looking forward to, to reunite these friends and, and uh, yeah, to play psalmody with Raphael and Nathanael. Excellent. But you will be performing uh, the, this trio at the Lofton Musical. Absolutely, on 7th July. Wonderful. You have another work tonight in the program of your own. Sonat pour violon seul. Yourself playing your own work solo for, for this audience. Tell us about this work. Tell us about the inspiration or the, or the context, actually. Why are we listening to this tonight? Um, this is a very important piece for me because it's, it's my instrument, violin, and the fact to play it alone, to, to compose for a solo violin piece was a very challenging mm. task because this is something I, I wanted to do at the latest in some, somehow because I usually compose for piano. Mm. To compose for solo violin meant that it was kind of um, uh, like a, a certain difficulty because I didn't want to write something too violinistically, yes. you know what I mean? And there's not this problem when you write for, for and at the piano. No, but viol solo violin is very exposed. Yes, but that's not a problem. I mean, we're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, this was a commission from uh, Festival des Forêts de Compiègne. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a very important time for me because I was um, starting to change a bit of, uh, of language, actually. It's, it was a second part of my, um, my process, I think. These two pieces uh, mark a shift in my composition language, actually. So I feel this is very personal and very intimate also to play alone my own piece. It's, 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 yeah, it's something very special, really. And um, it's a sonata in three movements. The, the first two are um, played together, attacca, mm -hmm. and uh, each movement is dedicated to a violinist I really appreciate. So uh, I really um, composed them, each, of each movement, while thinking of the, the, the violinist I composed for. The first movement is dedicated to Jacques Guettem, which is uh, somehow like a grandfather to me. He, he learned me so much and uh, he died just uh, a few months ago and to play this sonata means a lot also like to his memory mm. and also to all he learned to me. The second movement is dedicated to David Grimal. Uh, he has an orchestra, Les Dissonances, in, uh, in which I played in for several years. And it was such a fantastic uh, experience, mm. actually. It was my, my first uh, Sacre du Printemps and oui. many, many other orchestral pieces. And so I wanted to, to thank him with uh, the second movement of this, uh, this piece. And uh, the third movement is dedicated to Sarah Nemtanou, a uh, marvelous violinist, uh, which I, I met uh, for the first time personally, while she recorded my uh, clarinet quartet, uh, which is called Divertimento. And uh, it was at Radio France mm -hmm. in, um, in 2022. And uh, she was very moved my, by my piece. And, and this was such a beautiful human moment that I wanted to mark it in my uh, writing process. So. This, the last movement, very virtuosic, is, is for her. It's clear that 
again, this, this, this wonderful opportunity that you bring, the, you know, and, and the enthusiasm that you have and the, and the point of difference that you proudly said to me the other day that you're a living composer, not a, <laughs> not a dead composer. <laughs> you are here, you are real. And, and you're reflecting and, and you were reflecting on the role that musicians used to have, you know, composing, improvisation and so forth. It, it's always been the case. Let's talk a little bit about your performance career and because you have performances booked through festivals this summer. In fact, you're heading to another ambassador program uh, from Classics artist Clarissa Bevelacqua's festival in Salzburg. Yes, later, in October. Yes. Yeah, it, later this year. Mm -hmm. Again, solo violinist. Clarissa was very keen to perform solo violin when she was here. When you're wearing your violinist hat, and you're asked to perform programs at various events. Which other contemporary composers do you like to put on your program? I really enjoyed recently playing uh, Schoenberg Fantasy for violin and then piano. And then I would say really recently and still in summer, uh, we play with my pianist Gaspar Thomas, uh, Basevich Spartita. She is, um, sh she just died n not so many years ago, mm -hmm. but still she's known as a contemporary composer. Um, she's a Polish wonderful composer, Gracina Basevich, and she was a violinist also. So I really fe feel that I'm sort of close to her because she composed at the violin, for violin, and for many other uh, formations for mm -hmm. orchestra, for string quartet, for for piano solo, for many many formations, and I think she she's really interesting, and we should play her more actually. So um, this is also something I, I'm very uh, keen to uh, to play little known repertoire, and I think it's really important nowadays to widen our repertoire because we listening cons to concerts, always the same pieces. Very true. And I really want to, to program more hidden treasures, as I, as I like to, to think. Um, Szymanowski's second violin concerto that I will have the chance to play next year in April in Paris, or uh, Basevich Partita, or Sonatas by Respighi and Pierre This is something I really love and block, uh, poem mystique, and so many, many words that I love to share with the audience. And the audience is actually very happy to discover of course. so many beautiful things. So I think musicians can be more curious and expand their repertoire by searching. Where and where, uh, where and with whom will you be performing the Szymanowski? In April next it's year. with uh, Ustina Dubritsky, mm -hmm. uh, with the Orchestre des Lauréats du Conservatoire mm -hmm. in uh, Cité de la Musique on voilà. 23 April 2025. Well, Elise Bertrand, I, 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 we look forward so much to tonight's concert. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you and to, to, to spend time with you, to hear your story about balancing performance and composition so healthily and so actively, and um, we're very proud um, to, to, to experience the world premiere of Salmody this evening and follow its course uh, through, through its own journey as, <laughs> as you release it into the world. So thank you so much for making time, and I'm sure that uh, commissions from competitions and all sorts of things, will, all sorts of uh, institutions and, and organisations will, will, will flow. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you.